Haim G. Hurston himself. So, Gordon, over to you. Thank you. Um, for those of you who didn't come to our workshop, it's quite clear that you should have come because it was a proper workshop. Uh, everybody was talking, there was lots of discussion, lots of animated interest, and lots of good ideas about um, teaching and training on ward rats. Graham started off our session by asking what would make a good teaching or training ward round. And both sessions, there's a lot of emphasis on creating the right atmosphere within the team. That if you have a very hierarchical team with a command and control consultant, it's very likely that there won't be much teaching, training and learning because people won't ask challenging questions, they won't be expected to speak, uh, they'll be disrespected if they do speak. So the more we can do to dismantle the hierarchy in the team, to make sure that everybody knows each other within the team, and to give people a voice within the team. Um, going back to the World Health Organization operating theater checklist, the reason the safety is improved by that is simply that human beings who know each other's names and have spoken to each other once are more likely to do that again. So if we can do that in our ward rounds that we know everybody, the, from the medical student, the healthcare assistant, right up to the consultant, we all know each other's names and we've spoken at the pre-briefing ward round, then the chances are people will speak during the ward round and feel free to ask an, a diff question that they might otherwise be embarrassed to ask. There was a lot of emphasis <coughs> on question asking and some suggestions about leaving people plenty of time to answer a question. So you might ask them a question this week and expect them to come back with an answer next week. Or if you're examining an unconscious patient, tell the F1 you're going to ask him for the leading causes of unconsciousness once you've finished examining. Gives them a few minutes to ask. So it's if you're an open uh, consultant, know that you make mistakes, interested in people, interested in your patients, it's likely to help change that into a teaching and training ward round. We then moved on to a bit about patient, how we could learn patient safety in the ward round, and this is a very similar theme, thinking about all the things we have to do on the ward round. Make sure the diagnosis is right, make sure that the comorbidities are listed, that we've got a good treatment plan, and then whether the patient's proceeding to trajectory. Because if a patient's deteriorating, not making the progress that we have made, we need to pick up why that is, take corrective action, and get them back on path. And tied that in with a, a lot of the active patient safety stuff, um, has the patient got a catheter in? Get that taken out before they get a urine infection. Is the VTE prophylaxis right? Are they at falls risk? Um, have they got a cannula in? Have they got various other aspects of their immediate care that can go wrong? Particularly checking the drug chart, make sure that we're not getting drug errors. That made us realize how complex a ward round is. And that it can no longer be managed by one person. It has to be a proper team. That's the value of forming the team at the beginning, maintaining the team through, giving people roles, giving people responsibilities. Complex work like that can only be managed if you have a checklist of some form to make sure that you've dealt with all the issues that you can easily forget in the midst of that busyness, interruptions, anger, disturbance, heat, poor environment. So then the short bit of work on how people could design their checklists to show there isn't one answer, there may be five or six or 10 different answers depending on the circumstance. What you need to do as a team is decide the crucial things that need to be checked come up with a solution that works for you, be ready to change it. I then talked about how I developed a checklist uh, to deal with ward rounds and how we use that for training junior doctors in the complete systematic patient review with active patient safety checking around hydration, nutrition, catheters, cannulas, pressure area care, future planning. And that... Very, very oh. Final talk, final talk. Final talk. Final talk. I, so I good, when the person who uses that checklist and checks that the team's doing everything then learns how to do a safe ward round. Stop. Another note, extempore. Jo. Okay. I'm going to do this seated because I'm a bit near the edge and I might fall off because I've got my heels on. Um, we were looking at multi-professional visits and how we could introduce those. Um, we started off the session with a voting option asking two questions. First of all, was it a good idea to try and do um, a multi-professional visit in the first place? And secondly, was it feasible? Um, hopefully, we'll be able to actually give you the, the scores on the doors at the end of, of my um, feedback. Um, the first thing we asked people was what, what kind of staff groups would we be looking at if we were going to uh, visit uh, the learning environment in a maternity uh, service. Um, and we quickly realised that this could be huge. Um, a lot of uh, staff groups could be, could be uh, visited. Um, so it really gave us food for thought that we need to look at the scope of, of what we want. Um, the second issue was to be clear of the purpose of the visit. Um, to ensure that we knew what exactly it was we were going for. Are we looking at curricula 
or are we looking at the learning environment? So being quite specific around that. Um, we also had a, a good discussion about the visitors and what, the vi what type of visitors we should have. So should it be the experts, in which case we'd need to have, if we're visiting a number of staff groups, we'd have to have a number of experts, or should we be looking at more generic uh, visitors who are sort of assessment type um, experts? Um, very clearly, needing to, to use the existing information that we've already got and that the organisation has already got because we could have uh, incidents where uh, we only have a small group of students from one particular uh, staff group. Uh, so it could be just one, one student, so we'd need further information to, to back that up. And we had quite polarised opinion on whether students should be seen together or, or separately. So there was quite a view that ideally it would be great to, to see students together and hopefully we've, we've got over that, people can't speak up anymore, uh, but certainly a nervousness around uh, doing that um, and having to ensure that our visitors were very well trained in, in sort of counselling and, and, um, and giving feedback and, and, and accepting it from a group of, of disparate trainees. Thank you very much, Joe. Now, I'm going to ask you, can we uh, eat into 10 minutes of your refreshment time? Because obviously the next speaker will have to begin at 4 o'clock. Is that okay? Nod, yeah, nods of assent. Phil. Hi. Um, yes, our workshop was very different, really. We were looking at patient safety with um, very few resources. Um, we had a... Um, we explained how the anaesthetic visiting lecture program had been set up in KSS, which has now been running for 18 months, uh, where basically we have senior trainees going and being attached to a hospital in Jima in Ethiopia. They're helping to support the anaesthesiology team out there to provide training, not only for anaesthetists, but for midwives, for nurses, for um, on the intensive care unit and the experiences that the visiting lecturers have had um, while they've been out there and, the, and what they've got out of it as well. Um, one of the things that I've felt very proud of the lecturers going out there is how they've represented KSS as a deanery and the profession as a whole from this country in their professionalism, their resilience to the um, problems that they've been facing out there and um, I think they've educated out, out there more by example as opposed to the actual skills they're necessarily taking out there by the way that they, they have um, put themselves forward and shown their enthusiasm. Um, having described how the anaesthetic visiting lecture program has gone over the last 18 months, um, which has been very well supported by KSS in various ways, we're looking at expanding it to enable other specialties, um, people who like-minded people who like to come and um, help um, uh, in GEMA University and forming a link between GEMA University and HEKSS um, so that, for example, paediatricians, psychiatrists could potentially have put together similar schemes to go and work and transfer their skills to people who are less fortunate than ourselves in Jima and Ethiopia. I think this is both beneficial for, for us going out there and also extremely beneficial for our trainees when they come back. Um, and um, so if anyone's interested, they can contact me. There's contacts on, on the um, form there or Ali Green, who's doing an educational fellowship this year and she's putting a lot of time into trying to expand this uh, visiting lecture program and more of a permanent link between GEMA and KSS. And he's also trying to get funding from outside the deanery through DFID and um, VET. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. Uh, would uh, Kath like to? Th there we go. Great. Thanks very much. Um, I'll probably be about 30 seconds. Um, I am from the ambulance service, so we do try and do things a bit quickly. Um, what we wanted to do in our workshop was to give people a flavour of um, what it might be like to be a clinician working in the 111 or 999 advice centre, to consider what the differences are between working in that environment, um, and also 
to uh, give a flavour of what uh, HGE is paying for, which is an education programme to look at how we might improve assessment skills and decision making in the control room. So uh, the work in our workshop was uh, people experiencing a little bit of the way in which we are doing that with our staff and also listening to two very different calls. Uh, one, quite an ordinary sort of call, because what we want to do is to improve the ordinary. And the other one was a call that was uh, quite complex and to see just the range and to hear the range of um, conditions that people are calling for uh, and about in the service. That's it. Great. Thanks very much. So we've time for two questions or commentaries uh, from the audience. And as usual, if you could just introduce yourself and maybe give your designation and uh, then just address your questions to the uh, panelists. So <coughs> volunteers, please, to ask some questions. Right, well, we have David, <laughs> who's just ready to summarize the results of his vote whilst you think about your comments and your questions. Uh, obviously, getting to refreshments is important. I appreciate that. <laughs> so I think we've covered quite, we've just had trouble with the technology. We've almost got a grasp, but not quite. So I'll give you the, uh, the figures. We did the, the questions that we asked for multi-professional visiting is, is it desirable on a scale of great down to bad idea on five categories. So the people who said good and great before we started the session, the 71% thought it was a good idea to try and do multi-professional visiting before we started the thing. Once we'd finished, 63% thought it was a good idea. <laughs> <coughs> the second question people were asked was, is it feasible? Uh, and that was based on the criteria, again, five criteria based on oil and water was the worst, uh, not mixing vinaigrette in the middle and emulsion at the top. You can mix them very nicely. Before we started, 25% thought it was feasible to do multi-professional visiting. After we finished our session, 6.7% thought it was feasible. <laughs> so it was very useful information. It was a really good session. Uh, and I think the information that we've got will be extremely helpful. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so um, I think uh, I should call the session to close on that kind of Nick and Nigel type uh, data report. And can I just ask you to return promptly at 4 o'clock, and I just want to thank all the workshop uh, leads who led the four workshops on your behalf. Thank you very much.